Well, the science is accumulating that we can begin to scale back our mass quarantines, particularly the more draconian elements of them, without disastrous risks to public health. There will always be risk. People will long die of this virus, no matter whether we get inoculations against it or not. But we can pull back a little. We know that because there is evidence of it pretty much everywhere. Sweden never locked down. And despite what you have likely heard, Sweden is still no worse off than a lot of Europe. States in this country, like South Dakota, Iowa, and Arkansas, did not issue shelter-in-place orders ever. Yet all three of those places were below the national average in coronavirus cases and in deaths. Denmark and the Czech Republic loosened restrictions and have seen, at this point, no surge in new cases. So it's pretty clear that in many parts of this country, we could almost certainly do the same. And yet some cities and states will not consider doing this. In fact, if anything, they're moving in the opposite direction. As the pandemic appears to recede, at least for the moment, their restrictions are becoming tighter. And that's when you know this isn't really about public health. It's about making mediocre people more powerful. And there may be no one in America more mediocre than the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. Lightfoot recently announced that anyone who meets privately with friends or even talks about meeting privately with friends on social media will be monitored and could be arrested. Now, I've directed Superintendent Brown to order all police districts to give special attention to these parties. And this is how it's going to be. We will shut you down. We will cite you. And if we need to, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail. Period. The time for educating people into compliance is over. Don't be stupid. Don't come out. Don't advertise on social media. We're watching you. Do the people of Chicago take Lori Lightfoot seriously? How did a, a buffoon like that wind up in the mayor's office? Lori Lightfoot believes she has the power to imprison you if you talk about your weekend plans on Facebook. How did she get the power to do that? Well, that's still not clear. What is clear is that Lightfoot has no intention of following her own rules, living by her own restrictions. We know that because Lori Lightfoot recently broke her own quarantine in order to, and this is real, get her hair done. She got caught when her hairdresser blabbed about it on social media, but perhaps not surprisingly, she didn't seem ashamed in the slightest. Unlike you, she explained, Lori Lightfoot has to look good. I'm the public face of the city. I'm on national media and I'm out in the public eye. And, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a person who I take my personal hygiene very seriously. As I said, I felt like I needed to um, have a haircut. I'm not able to do that myself. And so I got a haircut. I take my personal hygiene very seriously. I feel like I needed to have a haircut. The funny thing is, you may be feeling the same way. Maybe you take your personal hygiene seriously, too. Maybe you'd like a haircut. But are you Lori Lightfoot? Okay. Didn't think so. So shut up and get back to your smelly apartment. Stop complaining. And if you don't, you're a Nazi. That's their new line, which is really their old line. In fact, it's always their line. Disagree with them, and you are a Nazi. And because they've now lost all capacity for nuance, they're actually saying it out loud now. Over the weekend, CNN suggested that anti-lockdown protesters in Michigan were in fact white nationalists, very much like the ones who marched in Charlottesville famously a few years ago, because of course they are. They're disagreeing with the people in power. It must be Nazis. Governor Gretchen Whitmer hastened to agree with that assessment. Some of the outrageousness of what happened at our Capitol this week, um, you know, depicted some of the worst racism and, and awful parts of our history in this country. You know, the Confederate flags and nooses, the um, swastikas, the, you know, behavior that you've seen in all of the clips is not representative of who we are in Michigan. So when you disagree with me, says mouth-breathing political hack Gretchen Whitmer, you're a Nazi. And CNN agrees, because if there's one thing that CNN cannot stand to see, it's dissent. Ordinary people disagreeing with the proclamations of the mighty. How is that even allowed? In fact, just the other day, one CNN reporter whined on Twitter that too many people were going to a park that he liked. So when New York police swooped in to break it up, that reporter applauded. 
How dare they? It's my park. Over on CNN, they celebrated the arrival of Chinese drones in the skies over New Jersey because what this country really needs is more surveillance and hectoring from the people in charge. Or as MSNBC put it, it's life-saving. Please go away from each other and separate. Elizabeth, New Jersey is now using drones to spread the life-saving message. You are not immune to this virus. The drones make it easier for police to see into certain areas where access by patrol cars is more difficult. That includes tight spaces between buildings, behind schools, and in backyards. You don't need to be some crazed, wild-eyed civil libertarian with a goatee to find all of this pretty distressing. What's happening now is unprecedented, it's dangerous, and it's completely and unequivocally unconstitutional. It violates the letter and the intent of the Bill of Rights on many levels. And someday soon we will deeply regret letting all of this happen. If only we had someone now to protect us as our rights disappear. Oh, wait, we do. The ACLU. For more than 100 years, the American Civil Liberties Union fought for the civil rights of the powerless, which at this stage means you. You're the powerless. So where's the ACLU today? Well, they're playing along with the authorities. They're sucking up to power. They're joining CNN and telling you to shut up and obey. As freedoms vanish across this country, the ACLU has filed dozens of lawsuits, not on your behalf or on behalf of the Bill of Rights, but demanding mail-in voting to abet voter fraud demanding the release of more criminals and illegal aliens. Their website boasts about this at length. But so far, it looks like the ACLU has filed only a single lawsuit in response to the mass quarantines, and it was in Puerto Rico. What's the message? The message is the ACLU is squarely on the side of your overlords now. That's a change. Meanwhile, our country and its centuries-old norms are dying before our eyes. We could give you many examples here, too. In Montgomery County, Ohio, authorities are reporting a greater than 50% increase in deaths from opioid ODs. Addiction rates, not just to drugs, but to alcohol, are skyrocketing. From the data we have so far, that seems true across the country. And yet, paradoxically, at the very same time, cancer patients are going without. Here's one indicator of that. Merck, the pharmaceutical company, the huge pharmaceutical manufacturer, is predicting a major hit to its earnings. Why? Because its biggest cancer-fighting drug is being prescribed less often. It's not that fewer people have cancer or they need it less. It's they can't get into the hospitals or they're too afraid to. They've been intimidated by politicians into not getting cancer treatments. Vaccines, checkups, major surgeries, all being delayed. People will die as a result of this. In fact, they already are dying, and that's fine with the people in charge. Just don't plan a dinner party on Facebook. They'll arrest you for that. 